Mr. Chris, one thing I'm wondering is what sort of problems did you run into during your creation and founding of Veebs? Yeah, so I think it actually is a pretty good segue from what we were talking about before the break with marketing. Um, that's where a lot of people get their information about what companies are doing. Uh, but the fact is that they're influencing in many different ways beyond marketing. And so to gather all the data that we needed was really the first challenge that we had to address. So how do we pull information about where their money is going, what organizations they're funding, all of that goes into the score in addition to what they might be. That was the first challenge that, and that data is all unstructured. So we have to pull it out of a, a number of different locations then figure out how we're gonna process it um, in a consistent way into a score. The second piece is how do you make it easy to use, right? So there's 300,000 products uh, in the database now. Um, we didn't wanna just make a repository of rabbit holes, right? We wanted to make it easy for the customer to use at the point of sale. So we had to connect all the data we were gathering, all the scoring we were doing to the, to the barcodes that people could scan or, or search from. Uh, so those were the kind of the two biggest problems. Um, the third is keeping things up to date. Um, like I said, a lot of companies or a lot of brands change ownership on a pretty regular basis in the in the food and alcohol industry in particular. And so you see these companies change hands and then they're, uh, the, what they're focused on from a social uh, and political perspective changes as well. So we, we want to stay on top of that. And the reason is so that our customers can stay on top of it. Um, and we talk about, uh, one of the things that we were so surprised about when we started down this journey is just how much money these companies are spending on political and social things. And so, and, and that was really surprising to us. Uh, and almost all of that actually gets passed through to the customer. And so we want to be sure that as we learn about these companies, we make it easy for the customers to know what they're spending their money on and that it's going to pass through. It's it's not, you know, reclusive billionaires and dark money that are funding all this. It's it's you as a consumer buying from companies who then use their profits uh, in different ways that you may not agree with. So it was really about kind of illuminating that and talking to the the customer base or potential customer base about the power that they really have. Um, consumers spend $20,000 a year on groceries and, and alcohol and paper products. And we want them to use that size of purchase power uh, to best effect, or to, at least to the best effect that they want to want to use it for. Absolutely. And Veebs is an excellent product to do that. It's available on the Google Play Store and the Apple Store. So standouts, go ahead and download that. As someone who's looking into business and a bit of a businessman myself, I definitely would not want many of my consumers knowing if I were both marketing-wise openly and then also behind the table funding initiatives and policies that they did not like. And an app like this would really scare me because it would enable a lot of my customer base to not buy my product and would really hurt my business. What would you say to the businesses that are losing their customer bases through the creation of this app by giving consumers the ability to control their purchasing power? Yeah. So I, I think the first thing I would say is we really hope that people are using the app to reward companies that do the right thing. Um, and so, you know, we want those, those companies um, who match the kind of general public's um, values to, to succeed. We want companies to focus on price and quality more. Um, we'd love to see them kind of exclusively focused on those things rather than some of this other stuff. But the other kind of part of it to me is um, all we're doing is shining a light on what, what the companies are doing. And so if they want to continue to do those things, that's fine. That's up to them. It's a business decision on their part. Uh, but we don't want them to do it in a way that people can't see. Um, and, and we want people to be knowledgeable and empowered in how they make their purchasing de decisions. So if, if companies want to continue to do, you know, some of these, take some of these 50-50 uh, um, political and social stands, that's absolutely fine with us. Um, we just want to be sure that, you know, the, the consumer base knows it. And that's all we're doing is 
is shining a light on it so we can better match customers with companies that reflect their values. It's adding transparency back into a free market economy. That's exactly so that, right. Right. So we have corporate accountability. It's almost like putting uh, consumer protection just re really into literally the palm of your hand through the power of an app. We hear a lot, especially up here in Alaska, about this move through corporate America of ESG. And for those in the audience who don't know what that is, it's this new movement in corporate America called environmental social governance and their metrics that they're using to determine investment decisions and even corporate decisions like you're talking about, Chris, where they're going to now put investment in corporate dollars. You might even see it in some of the marketing, like, you know, buy our socks and we'll put 50 cents towards climate change. But as you said, that that means that that 50 cents is actually just passed on to the consumer and prices just go up so that they're involved in environmental, social, and governance initiatives. And then that affects things like um, their shareholder decisions, their board of directors, board of governors decisions. Everybody is sort of evaluating these companies based on their ESG metrics. It has also done things like really uh, dissuaded people from developing um, resource development, whether it's oil, gas, or mining in Alaska, because we don't fall high on the ESG scale, though they're developing mineral development and resource development in other parts of America, just not in Alaska. So one of the things I hear you saying is it sounds like Veebs is really pushing back against this ESG trend by, by pushing this transparency, by pushing the ability of the consumer to say, actually, we just want to restore the freedom of capitalism and free market economy. Did I capture that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I think, you know, we're, what we're doing is just making sure that if a company is going to spend money on those things, um, that everyone knows that they're spending money on that and, and what the implications are. Uh, you know, you talked about climate. Um, to me, that's, that's a pretty good example. You know, companies are talking about climate, this, climate, that. Um, you know, what, are, what is our commitment to the climate emergency? And I think that it's just gone overboard. Um, I, you know, I saw a study by McKinsey recently. I mean, that's, that's not a, a conspiracy. That's, you know, McKinsey, the consulting firm said last year, the global economy spent 5.7 trillion with the T dollars on net zero goals. And that's expected to go up to 9 trillion per year for 30 years. Um, just that's basically 5% of the global economy spent on net zero goals. And we're going to spend 300 trillion over the next 30 years. And it's it's just it seems like an overblown reaction to a problem that's maybe not all the way defined yet. And you know, I'm a I'm a business friendly uh, guy about about the environment. Um, but the things that are important to me from an environmental perspective, there's like six or seven. You know, soil health, water cleanliness, a bunch of other stuff comes ahead of of glo uh, global warming or, or climate change, um, and the entire economy is changing um, because of that. And it's changing in a lot, a lot of, a lot of the reason that it's changing is because companies are pushing that. And um, so to me, you know, let's be clear about what companies are talking about. Let's be clear about the types of uh, influence that they're trying to peddle. And, you know, from my perspective, uh, Alaskans, for instance, uh, might want to push back on our companies uh, kind of ginning up uh, a little bit too much Fewer over this one topic at the expense of, you know, maybe their their, their prosperity for sure, and and maybe even some other environmental issues. So, um, that's that's what we're trying to do is to say, you know, if you're worried about those topics, um, then see what the companies are doing, see what they're saying, and see see how they're influencing, and just make sure that what you're doing, what you where your money's going, aligns with your own beliefs.